Unfortunately, India has the worst air quality in the world. Many of the cities in India are highly polluted, and we know that actually there's actually a attributed this pollution to millions of deaths every year. It's absolutely shocking. And I feel very, very sad for a lot of the families and children that have to live in this. Smog is horrendous in these places. As a result, governments, local governments in India are considering banning the sale of internal combustion cars. I think they have to do this. I don't believe they have any choice. And this is the solution to millions of excess deaths. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to have you with us. So what's all of this about? Well, there was a media report recently revealing the 20 most polluted cities in the world. In the top 10, I believe quite a number of them were located in India. India is now mulling or considering a, a ban on internal combustion engines and then blocking fuel sales to older vehicles as well. In a bid to combat crippling air pollution in the capital city in India, Indian lawmakers have talked about a plan to phase out gas and diesel combustion vehicles by 2035. This would cause a huge shift in the global car landscape. By 2035, in fact by 2030, internal combustion will be completely dead in China and I believe it will happen much sooner than I believe it will happen by the end of 2027. There won't be any more internal combustion engine vehicles being sold in China. By 2035, I believe there won't be any hybrids being sold in China either. That means the world's largest car market of around 32 million cars. In fact, that's about 38% of the entire global car market. Won't be selling internal combustion cars anymore. Now, if India follows suit, then that will have a huge change. Now, we're now looking at what? Like a third of the world's population banning or getting rid of the sales of internal combustion cars. Europe is doing the same thing. Europe is saying 2035, no more cars that aren't electric. That's the second largest car market in the world. So if we put Europe together with India and China, well, I mean, that's like 60% of the world's car market. And that will mean that automakers, particularly Japanese and German ones, and possibly American as well, that rely on making money from internal combustion engine car sales are going to do what exactly? Well, no one knows. It's a total mystery. They don't even, I don't think they even know themselves what they're going to do because they don't profit off electric cars and they may not be able to. Long considered one of the world's most polluted capital cities, Indian capital Delhi is taking huge steps to cut back pollution with a gas and diesel engine ban coming soon. But they want results faster than that, apparently. Delhi is starting with a citywide ban on refueling vehicles more than 15 years old, and it's gone into effect. So if you've got a vehicle more than 15 years old, you can't refill it. I don't know how they're enforcing this, but um, anyway. We're installing gadgets at petrol pumps, which will identify vehicles older than 15 years and no fuel will be provided to them, said Delhi Environment Minister. Manjinder Singh Sursa, but they're not stopping there. Additionally, we will intensify scrutiny of heavy vehicles entering Delhi to ensure they meet prescribed environmental standards before being allowed entry. One of the big problems with the pollution that is in India is an issue we face in America and Australia as well. You guys don't have it as much in Europe because it's not as many idiots in Europe, I don't think. I know it sounds harsh, but it is true. A lot of Australians and Americans remove their particulate filters from their diesel cars and from petrol cars, but more product, more commonly from diesel cars. And then the pollution from those vehicles is deadly. It's literally just cancer, cancer fumes coming out of those cars. It's horrendously bad. And what that means is the smog is really bad. This is very common, very common that a lot of vehicles in third world countries or developing countries or poorer parts of other countries have no, no, no filters whatsoever. So that smog you're seeing from vehicles is much, much worse. One vehicle would represent the equivalent of 10 modern vehicles in other countries. Now, that means that these fumes, are they are literally poisonous and killing people. And I think the Indian government is saying, you know what, we've got a lot of these old vehicles around the roads and they are really probably wouldn't be roadworthy in you know Western countries. They don't, a lot of them have broken exhaust and they're just spitting out toxic fumes. These are the kind of vehicles we don't want to be, we, we don't want to have them on the roads. 
this is going to be interesting. It's going to be very challenging for a lot of the poor people in India having to deal with this situation. I'm not sure how the, what they're going to do about this. It will be prohibitively difficult for Delhi's residents to own and operate older, more polluting vehicles. And, and apparently they're also planning to go about it in other ways as well, which I think are more proactive and possibly more positive. They're going to deploy more than 900 electric buses in the city. And that's part of a plan to replace 5,000 of the city's 7,500 total buses with electric buses. That'll make a huge difference. 7,500 buses, 5,000 of them being fully electric, massive, massive difference. I mean, the buses that you see in India, you see huge, huge plumes of black smoke coming from the back of them. The Economic Times says the discussions are underway to pass laws requiring that all future bus purchases will be required to be electric or clean fuel, meaning either natural gas or hydrogen. By the end of this year, with gas and diesel bans on three-wheelers and light goods vehicles, tuk-tuks and delivery mopeds coming in either 2026 or 2027, and a similar ban on privately owned and operated cars and bikes between 2030 and 2035. My take on this, I think this stuff is all really good, but there's one big problem that India faces, and that is that because they are quite a protectionist country, you think Trump tariffs are bad, India's tariffs are worse than that, then that means that a lot of Indians don't have access to affordable electric bikes, affordable electric tuk-tuks, affordable electric vehicles. There's, there are some being made in, in India, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot better product coming from outside of India and there's a lot more of it. So it's more expensive or, I mean, you can get cheaper stuff in India. I've done videos on some of the vehicles, but they're not really that good at the budget price, which is what most people in India would be looking at. You know, there's 1.4 billion people and obviously a huge amount of poverty. So a lot of them need, we're gonna be forced to have to move away from their internal combustion motorbike or their internal combustion scooter and get an electric one, which is fine. I mean, it's totally fine. And in places like Australia, people can afford that. People in places like America, people can afford that. And that's awesome. But in India, where there's a lot of protectionist measures, it means those products are not as good and they're more expensive. So it will be a, a big challenge for them. It is necessary though. I mean, really these fumes are killing people. So I don't think India has much choice. Here's the thing as well. A Chinese government study linked air pollution caused by automotive exhaust and coal-fired power plants to more than 1.1 million deaths per year, all the way back in 2013, when pollution was nowhere near as bad as what it is today. And at that time, China took serious action on closing down old coal power plants and imposing strict emission standards. They also incentivized electric cars. Back in 2013, in fact, I visited China. I was riding my bike around the world around then, well, actually it was a bit before then, and I was shocked by the fact that there was electric scooters everywhere, even in cities in the middle of nowhere. They were just littered all over the streets, these electric mopeds. Amazing that they had them so many of them back then. And at that point in time, the Chinese government might have had a plan to take over the world with electric cars, which is happening now. I don't know. But I think their first reason for, for actually promoting electric vehicles was simply to reduce the massive smog and pollution in Chinese cities. And it's working. Chinese cities now have embraced electric cars. The air there is unquestionably cleaner than the air in Los Angeles or Melbourne or Sydney, uh, you know, or cities like London. Go to some cities in, in China and it doesn't feel like there's pollution at all, even though there's lots of cars around. Now, some are, some are not like that, but some are like that. So embracing electric cars has been massive for China because it's enormously reduced the burden on the healthcare system. You're talking about millions of people coming in for respiratory illnesses and, and serious problems that are caused by all this pollution. So India had, needs to make this change like China has. Obviously, China was a bit more forward thinking. They started the process about 15 years ago, maybe even a bit longer than that. And it's paid massive dividends in China. It will also do the same thing if it actually turns out and they can ban the sale of these old vehicles in India. And in 2035, absolutely, absolutely India, and I think every country around the world should ban the sales of internal combustion engine cars. Not saying every country should ban hybrids, but definitely purely internal combustion engine cars. What are your thoughts? Let me know what you think in the comments.